everybody, this is Tim W. Leather Tachi 1996, and welcome to the last episode of Season 3 of Godzilla FX, and to this week we have Godzilla Final Wars from the year 2004. Now, this movie, wow, Toho really ended the series, with, ended the, fran the franchise as a whole. They really ended the franchise with a bang. I mean a huge bang. Now, this poster here, um, in all honesty, I really love this poster a lot better because I know there is another, I know there's like another poster with like half of Godzilla's face, half of Godzilla's face on it, uh, with all, with everything from the character, from the human and alien characters to, uh, the monsters to the machines under his, under his top jaw, but... Not a really big fan of that poster, so this one's a lot better where it shows him in his full glory. Now, this movie really plays out like it. I mean, the director for this movie had to have been a fan of Destroy All Monsters because this is what this movie plays out as. This movie heavily plays out like a big, bigger budget remake, like a modern remake of Destroy All Monsters. And I'm gonna get to that in a sec. I'm gonna get to why here in when the first screenshot shows up. But seriously though, I really love this poster, and I know that there is a bed sheet for this. I know there is. I'm sorry to get kind of get off topic here, but I know that there's a bed spread for this, and why? Because I saw it on one of D-Man 1954's videos. He has this pic, this picture in particular of Godzilla as on his bed as his bedspread and trust me I really really want that I know they have it on Amazon and here we go now the thing about this Godzilla movie is that there's a lot more like American actors in this movie than ever this movie's all over the place like you have um mon like like I said how this movie plays out like destroy all monsters you have Monsters attacking cities all over the world, like Rodan in New York City, uh, King Caesar in Okinawa, which is really weird because uh, King Caesar is a god monster at Okinawa, so why is he attacking Okinawa? I don't get it. But anyways, in Anguirus is attacks Shanghai, China. Kamakuras attacks Paris. Kamunga the Spider attacks Arizona. And then you have... Well, actually, I'll wait until that screenshot comes up because there's one more monster in this movie that I will not mention until that screenshot pops up. And I really love uh, Rodan's design. Now, the special effects in this movie, this movie, straight up 10 out of 10. This movie gets a straight up 10 out of 10 for me because watching this movie was like going through a nostalgia trip. Just seeing... Rodan, just seeing all the monsters again and attacking different cities all over the world. I love that they did that. And just and Rodan's appearance is amazing. I mean, seriously, the way he curls his wings, lands on the building, and then in front of the moon, it just looks so badass. It really does. The director of this movie, this movie was clearly made by a Godzilla fan. And you can tell... I mean, I'm not saying that this movie was another outside source in film like um, GMK was, but seriously though, this movie, the director was clearly a Godzilla fan, and the and it plays out like he really wanted to do a Godzilla movie. Now, this uh, here's King Caesar. Now, this is my very first effects con with this movie. This is my very first effects con is I don't, I mean, when it comes to King Caesar here, um, I don't like his eyes. I am not a fan of his eyes. In the original version, his eyes were all red and glowing. You know, it looked cool, right? He had all red glowing eyes. You know, I really like that. But in this movie, eh, his eyes are... They look a little cartoony to me. I'm not... They... His eyes look a little cartoony. I'm not really a fan of that. In all honesty, I'm not a big fan of his eyes. Because his eyes just look a little too cartoony for me. So, yeah. But everything else about the King... About 2004 King Caesar suit, I love it. 
A lot of great detail. A lot of great detail. Oh, and also, um, there's another monster. There's two other monsters I forgot. Well, actually, there's a few more that I forgot to mention are in this movie. Um, Manda is in this movie. Uh, we haven't seen him since a little stock footage scene from Terror of Mechagodzilla. And then also, Mothra's in this movie. Obviously, it's a Godzilla movie. Why wouldn't Mothra be in here? Oh, and also, Ebera, the giant lobster from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monsters in this movie. Um, and actually, there's an effects con with him, too. I mean, the scene with him is amazing. It's got a lot of action in it. It's with it's you got the military shooting at him and he's at like some power plant and he's smashing buildings. I mean, he gets a lot of, he gets great recognition in this movie. And then there's this this one effects con when he walks um anatomically all six of his legs should be on the ground. Oh, I'll talk about this here in a second. After I talk about Ebra, um, I'm sorry I couldn't get a screenshot of Ebra 2004. He has a better design than 1966. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm gonna tell you that much. And when he walks, all six of his legs, it's like the guy in that suit was only walking on only two of the legs because the other four are like they're not even touching the ground. But it's like when lobsters walk, um. Shouldn't all six legs be on the ground? Like, shouldn't it be crawling or something? Like, in the movie, it didn't look like he was crawling. But that's the only thing. But every other... But everything else with the these mutant humans... Oh, the mutant humans are like these martial artists with these crazy physical abilities. And they're like future soldiers or something like that. They're just badass. And they shoot... And there's a small team of them that shoot at Ebra. And they take his ass down. They take this giant crustacean's ass down. And then, here is one of the monsters in this movie. This is Godzilla. And don't you dare, I'm telling you this right now. The name Zilla is bullshit. I hate that name. I hate that name. I hate that name. I really hate that name. Because it's Godzilla, okay? Just a different look, okay? I can't believe Toho is making fun. They're making fun. I don't know, like... Naming it Zilla is ridiculous because Toho, when and the movie that this is from, this will be in a two-part special that's going to be coming next week and a week after next week when I talk about this creature's movie, when I talk about this creature's film and the animated series following it because the animated series is the direct sequel to that movie. Ah, oh, Dad, whatever. I'll get into that once. I'll get into that when I review that movie uh, next week. Um... Yeah, so everything, my rant about the hate that that movie gets, you will hear it next week, believe me. But I really do love the design, the CGI, pretty hit, the CGI, pretty hit or miss with him. With, uh, with Iguana Godzilla there, with, uh, Dinosaur Godzilla, I should say. Oh, and then here we have Anguirus. Now, I love this, he has a very, uh, what do you call, um, he has a very wolfish kind of snarl, I love that his, his face looks like a wolf, kind of, but he just looks so awesome, like, he has more spikes on his arms, and his, his stomach has more, like, the, uh, uh, tur turtle-ish kind of heavy scaling, I guess, I, I just really love this version of Anguirus, and, his roar is a little more high pitched, but that's fine. It's still Anguirus' roar. And one thing I do love Anguirus' new ability that he has is he can roll up into a ball and bounce around everywhere. I think that's it's funny, but at the same time, it's cool though that Anguirus actually has a real ability. Because the last time we saw Anguirus in a fight, he kept um he just fought like a dog basically in a way just I don't know but f the flying backwards and using your shell to hit opponents to move from Godzilla versus Gigan yeah that was cool but the uh rolling into a giant ball spike ball and bouncing around dodging military weapons you know that's a cool move that's an even better move actually and the destruction with him is really cool like all the destruction scenes the monsters destroying every city on this planet 
are really good. They're really well done. And like I said, that's why this movie gets a 10 out of 10. Mo oh, and oh, and here's another mon. I know I did mention this monster. Um, you got Kamakuras, who has not been seen since Godzilla's Revenge. Literally, if you ever notice, Godzilla's Revenge is when Kamakuras was the Kamakuras' last appearance. And it's just so funny that um, it Kamakuras, I don't know, it just had each monster, like, they get love, they get some love. I mean, I love that every monster gets some recognition again, you know, as it should be. And I mentioned Mando's in this movie, didn't I? I did. Manda, I'm so sorry, I could not get a shot of Manda either. I, I wish I did, because... Manda's design looks so much like a Chinese dragon. Like, he shows up right after... Oh, and the beginning of this movie is amazing. Like, it's got Godzilla being shot at by this big weapon. It's this ship weapon that kind of looks like the one Kamakuras is trying to beat up. Um, called the Gotango. And the Gotango is, is, is basically... Picture this thing, but instead of the giant ball in the front, it has a giant drill... And that hasn't been seen since this 1960s monster movie that was Manda's debut appearance called Atragon, where Manda fought the Gotengo. And I guess the director threw that scene in this movie, he just redid it, you know, for the story, to fit the story. But Manda dies. Like, seriously, Manda dies in this movie. He gets turned to stone, and then he gets a blit, then the drill um, obliterates him. So yeah, you actually get to see a monster die. But the siege but Manda's just so cool in this movie. Like I said, I'm so sorry I could not get a screenshot of him. He looks like a Chinese dragon. And then there's a point where um he the lava, like the heat of the lava touches his body and he glow starts glowing bright yellow. And then the way he moves is so Chinese dragonish. I love that. Oh, and Gigan. Oh my god. I keep forgetting to mention monsters. I don't know why. This Gigan, I love his design more than the 1970s look. Um, this one looks like very Black Knight-ish. And he has a new origin story in this movie. Well, an actual origin story because the 1970s Gigan didn't really have one. He just showed up. Uh, all they said was he was from this other... He was from Nebula and Space Hunter. Like, they never actually gave him an origin story. But in this movie, they said that 12,000 years ago, Gigan came to Earth and Mothra whooped his ass. So, it's like, when they say... When they show monsters that Mothra's fought, it's like, oh my god, maybe she's not that weak. <laughs> maybe she's not so weak after all. But it's like... Gigan's design, I love his look. And remember when I said on the poster for Godzilla vs. Megalon, um, they show Gigan shooting stuff out of his eye, and he, but he never did it? This time, in that movie, well this time he actually shoots a laser out of his eye, and it's really overpowered. And he has this Black Knight kind of look. If you look at his shoulders, and his chest, and his neck, he has this Black Knight kind of look. This evil, dark, this evil Black Knight. I can't say Dark Knight because then that would be um, talking about Batman and I can't talk about Batman because he's my favorite DC hero. Anyways, yeah, and his hooks have, the see the two things on his hooks, the two other deals, um, those actually shoot wires out of them. Yeah, Gigan's got some new, Gigan, he got an upgrade, he got a serious upgrade and well, so, and they find Gigan like mummified, like a couple of the human characters find Gigan mummified and encased in, you know, this ancient crust or whatever. Oh my god, another monster I forgot to mention. Minya! But yeah, Gigan is just super badass in this movie. But he's kind of weak, and I'll explain that later. And here you got Minya. Um, in all honesty, I, the Minya in this movie, um, the actor, I don't know who played any of the monsters in this movie, so please don't ask. I, I literally did not catch it in the credits. And it's just so funny, like, Minya shows up at the area, this is Mount Fuji is where this shot takes place at, and it's just like, Minya tr just travels around with this kid and this, this random kid and his grandpa the whole, the whole movie, and it's like, they, he, they drive around in this little truck, and every scene with him, and it's funny, because there's this, <laughs> there's this funny scene where he literally tries to grab the steering wheel after the old man, 
is like, hey, hey, Miller, where are we going, huh? And Minya freaking grabs the steering wheel. It's this funny little scene. He's so, Minya is so funny in this movie. He's always been funny. He always has this fun, like, little kid personality, but it's like, I don't know, in this movie, he's just, it's just so hilarious. And did suit-wise, design-wise, the execution, I don't know, it just feels, it just, it feels more, I don't know, I just love the fact that, like, the original Mina was like, I don't know, from Son of Godzilla and Godzilla's Revenge and Destroy All Monsters, it I'm sorry, I listed those completely out of the last two out of order. I'm sorry about that. I don't know, just this mean is a lot better. Execution wise, yeah, the suit looks really rubbery, like um kid child dinosaur rubbery, you know. It has that it does look like that, believe me, but the execution is just so much better. It just has a better execution than the original. No disrespect to March on the Dwarf, no disrespect to him, no disrespect to March on the Dwarf, who played the original Minya, he played him good. I love how he gave him this very childlike personality, but the new Minya is a lot better. And here we go. And this is this screenshot here. This is where Godzilla was frozen in ice, and the humans have to let him out to fight all the other monsters because apparently humans can't do shit against giant monsters. So how to kill a monster? Get an even bigger one. So they let Godzilla out of the South Pole where he's frozen. And it's just, and when he comes out, oh, when he comes out, he shoots at Gigan. The, that the first thing you see is the atomic breath coming out of the, out of the fire. And when Godzilla shows up, they give this awesome, like wallpaper-worthy effect, where there's this literal fire burning in his eyes. I mean, he, Godzilla is just pissed when he comes out of the ice, and literally. He has this little fight with Gigan, and this is what I mean, Gigan, he is tough, but he's also kind of weak because Godzilla literally just blows his head off. Literally, he Gigan gets executed in this movie. He, I mean, remember when I was talking about the wires, Gigan can shoot out of his hooks? Well, he does that, and it entangles Godzilla's neck, and he's trying to drag him towards the buzzsaw on his torso, but then Godzilla just blows his head off. And Godzilla, literally, in this movie, he massacres everybody. Like, every creature he comes across is so brutal. He blows Gigan's head off. Then he goes to Sydney, Australia, where the other Godzilla in this... Where the other Godzilla would destroy... Just wiped it from existence. And then... He... Then this Godzilla fights that one. He blows up the other Godzilla when he tail slams him into the Sydney Opera House. Oh, and then he, no, this is the next fight here. This is Kamunga, and, well, you all know who Kamunga is. I did not mean to sound that. That sounded childish. I did not mean to say that. And Kamunga in New Guinea, in Papua New Guinea, Godzilla throws him. He throws him. God only knows what happened to him. But Kamunga, I do got to give some, some serious recognition of the big spider, because Kamunga here, when he shoots his webbing, it, 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 it like, fans out into a net. Now, I love the effect that it does that. Like, it's a straight arrow, and then it just, whoo, like, whoo, net. I love that they, it's a really great effect, and then Godzilla just grabs his, grabs him by the web hanging out of his mouth, and then um, wheels him around a couple of times, and then lets him go. Now, God only knows what happened to Kamunga, but when he flies off, man, he, he's dead. So it's like he blows up Gigan's head off, blows up the other Godzilla, launches Kamunga to God knows where. Oh, and then he fights Kamakuras right after this, and he impales Kamakuras on a on a uh, telephone pole, or telephone wire pole or whatever. Kamakuras gets impaled. I mean, he destroyed Godzilla destroys everybody in this movie. And then he afterwards he fights King Caesar, Rodan, and Anguirus um, at Mount Fuji, at the Mount Fuji area. And what's so great, what I really do love about this is when I mean the director of this movie is a huge Godzilla fan. Apparently he looked back at the old movies, had to, um, because Camera, because. Kamakuras and Kamunga were his enemies. Gigan was his enemy, obviously. The other Godzilla. 
uh, pfft, the, you know, you're uh, you're gonna hear my rants about that version on why I hate the hate on that version. Yeah, see right here, this is after the fight with um, Rodan and Gyrus and King Caesar. Um, notice anyone who has seen this movie, anyone notice how Godzilla did not kill? He did not kill those three. If you ever notice, he didn't, and the reason being is that. They were his allies at, one, at some point in history. They were all of, all three of them were his allies. So Godzilla has no reason to kill him. Godzilla literally, he has no reason to kill him. He literally just piles him up and they're still moving after the fight. So yeah, they're still, yeah, Godzilla spared those three because they were his allies, man. It's like, why would you kill your allies? I mean, that kind of give a little character build up for Godzilla here. And the and what's so funny is they actually explain in this movie that the aliens um, uh, restructured the DNA of all the monsters to gain control of, to gain control over them, all except Godzilla, because apparently they didn't even know Godzilla existed when the aliens were coming. Um, and I'm sorry to deviate from the effects in this movie. Oh, and I didn't talk about well. Here's Godzilla's design. Before I talk about something a little something else here Godzilla's design he his skin feels very Heisei-ish it really does I mean it it's a really interesting design it's like it it's kind of like um the Kiryu saga mixed with raids again because he's really thin I mean Godzilla's really really thin in this movie he has a very raids again body shape with um some Heisei skin that's really what I can think of. He's like Space Godzilla versus Space Godzilla design mixed with Raids Again. I mean, seriously, that's the best I can literally describe this this version of him. Um, oh, here we go. This is the one of the new monsters in the movie uh, called Monster X, and I really, really love the design because he feel it feels very demonic. It looks like something out of hell, truly. <laughs> And he and he looks very human. He has a very humanoid, very human body shape, which is amazing, which is cool. And if you ever notice, he has three heads. Now, in the next screenshot, I'll tell you why. You'll see why Monster X has three heads. And I don't know, just everything about this movie is just downright awesome. Literally, everything about this, from the opening of the movie to the cr to the closing credits is so cool. Any Godzilla fan needs to watch this. That's my recommendation mainly to die-hard Godzilla fans or if you're will or if you're one of those moviegoers who just wants to let reality fly out the window for 2 hours, watch this movie cuz it kicks ass. I mean, this movie kicks ass. And Toho, they just like, hey, they want to give a, back in 2004, you know, they wanted to, hey, they wanted to give Godzilla a send-off, and they sent him off. They gave him a great send-off, actually. So, yeah, and literally, I want to talk about the aliens who control each of the monsters in this movie. Um, I guess this movie made trench coats badass. It really did, because, well, I mean, you have Tremors 4, you have the character Black Hand Kelly, who's dressed in a really awesome leather trench coat but then you have the aliens in this movie the villains anyway uh they wear black trench coats and their costumes are cool which adds to the effects of the movie their cost the costume design is amazing is really cool and then you have um actor who wrestler don fry playing in this movie as this um as the gotango's captain and he wears a, a brown trench coat in this movie too so it's just every all the main badasses wear trench coats in this movie. I just had to talk about that because it's like, really, does everybody wear a trench coat? It just looks awesome because I'm a big trench coat fan. And here we go. The this is the last monster that Godzilla fights in this movie. And I, I this is Ghidorah, but it's not King Ghidorah. It's Kaiser Ghidorah. Yes, that is literally what this creature's name is, and it's and this is it. Monster X turns into it. Literally, Monster X turns into Kaiser Ghidorah in this full-on CG transformation, which is really awesome. And it's just so funny how why couldn't King Ghidorah ever look like this? <laughs> like seriously. But any, but I do love this. Um, I do love Kaiser Ghidorah's look and. 
what's so funny is this Ghidorah is a quadruped. I know in some shots it's hard to tell, but it's a quadrupedal Ghidorah. And this is the last monster Godzilla fights, and I love that because it's like, how... Uh, what better way to send Godzilla off than for Godzilla to than to fight one of his most classic, die-hard, ass-whooping adversaries? Like, seriously, I love that they did it. And Godzilla gets his energy sucked out by, the, by this guy, by this creature. Literally, he gets his energy sucked out, and then the main mutant human that the movie focuses on does this crazy, using 100% of his brain, to me anyways, the way it looks, and he shoots this big burst of energy into Godzilla's back plates, and then Godzilla just blows the middle head off, and then has the head on the right blow off the head on the left, and then Godzilla just tosses him around, picks him up, throws him around, and then throws him into outer, then throws him into the air, and blows him up with his tom with red atomic breath. Yeah, the red atomic breath comes back in this movie, and just. Oh my god, everything about this movie, I, and the only other effects cons that I can talk about, I don't count, okay, my fourth one is not really, okay, yeah, it's an effects con. Um, my third effects con doesn't deal with the monsters, it deals with the mutant humans, um, where this one, so, this one mutant human getting kicked in the face, um, looks very 1990s, oh my god, you can tell he didn't even touch him kick, I don't know, it just looks really weird, and then... Hedora the Smog Monster, I forgot to mention that one. Hedora the Smog Monster makes an appearance in this movie, and there's this fight that happens where Godzilla kills Hedora and Ebra at once, and I wish they would have shown it, in all honesty. It, the more monster action, the better with, these, with the Godzilla films, and I can't believe they didn't show it, but you hear it, like, off-camera. You hear it off-camera, and the... the the, the alien villain in this movie. I gotta, I gotta mention him. I know I don't talk about plot or human characters, but I have to with this movie because it's just downright hilarious. Every time Godzilla either kills a monster or beats the crap out of one, he does this childish, um, throat, not a throwdown crying, but he freaking throws a shit fit over every monster that gets his ass kicked by Godzilla here. And it's just so funny where... He watches, the camera focuses on him during the uh, tussle with Ebra and Hedora, and you hear it off camera, right? And you, and he turns around to the human characters and he's like, he's like, wait, he's like, wait a minute. And then he, Godzilla wins and he's like, ah, forget it. <laughs> and then he focuses on the human characters. It's so, the, the alien leader, um, after he, well, it's a younger guy after he kills the bald dude. Um, he shoots him with a gun and then takes over, takes command of the Exilians, as the aliens are called. Um, it just, he has these funny moments when he's by himself. <laughs> and that, and then there's all this kung fu. I literally, this whole movie's just martial arts fighting. It's martial arts fighting mixed with Godzilla. Like, literally, that's the best way you can describe Godzilla Final Wars. It's literally martial arts and Godzilla. Aliens, mar science fiction, mar martial arts, and Godzilla. Like, that's the best way you can describe Godzilla Final Wars. You can sum this movie up in three w in three phrases. But overall, Godzilla Final Wars, it's a downright amazing Godzilla film. Toho really knew how to send off the, the King of the Monsters. You know, they knew how to do them. They knew how to finish them off with a bang and like I said 10 out of 10 for the score um literally and this is actually my third favorite Godzilla film this is this is definitely my third favorite when it comes to the Godzilla films so I really hope you know you enjoy you're still enjoying this series um big shout out to my buddy uh, Megas Dragon um for the logo at the beginning of this at the yeah, at the beginning of this video, and all link to his channel will be in the description below, and also to the movie reviews library because he's because Megas Dragon is with me, um, and my boy Alan on that channel. And please let me know down in, and the link to that channel will be in the description below also. And also for the movie reviews library, please please give us suggestions on what movie you want us to review next. All right. 
uh, yeah, so those are my thoughts on Final Wars. Hope you guys, please like, sub, you know the usual. So see everybody. See you next week with the two-part special where I cover the TriStar version.